law is outside of California, is it? We've done it in New York. All right. So I think legally it appears that we're fine. Sure. But we'll see how we do with this. Yeah, yeah. I never see the things ever turn up anywhere, even when they do turn up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's for. Everybody, where everybody can hear us. Mic check down the line. Hello. 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 Good? Hello. They're not on. Now we're good. Yes, they all are. right. Now Mic check on. down the line. Yes. Hello. 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 Can you hear us in the back? Hello. 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 Back. Raise your hand. We're good. Yeah. More volume. It's not that bigger. Uh, we got a request for more volume from the back. Anybody, all right. Yeah. We'll try to project like in the theater. Hey, everybody, welcome to it's Comics Writers on Writing, correct? Yeah, it says right here, Comic Writers on Writing. <laughs> I hope that, so. That's what it says on the back of my name. And we're going to talk about writing comics with this illustrious panel of comic book writers. Uh, from, well, to my right immediately, uh, Jay Ferber, who writes Antihero for Monkey Brain, Near Death, and Dynamite 5 for Image Comics. Next to him is Eric Stevenson, the publisher of Image Comics and the writer of Nowhere Men, also published by Image Comics. Next to him is Anthony Johnston, who writes Wasteland, The Fuse, and Umbral. Correct? Yep. And that's for several different publishers, am I correct? A wasteland is only the Fuse and Umbrella image. There you go. You guys all heard that? Nice. Good. And next to him is, what's that? Point your mouths at the microphones, gentlemen. Wow. Point, oh, point, we're point. supposed to talk into yeah. these? Get, get, real, get real tight on those mics. Uh, and next to him is Jeff Parker, who writes Batman 66 and Aquaman for DC, and wrote the miniseries Mysteriously Unfathomable and Underground for uh, Image Comics, correct? Yes. Yes. This, this isn't on. Is oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So we're going to talk about writing comics. And I want to start with you guys. And uh, before you start writing anything, you have an idea, correct? The idea comes to you. In we're not going to talk about where the <laughs> ideas come from because that's not worth going into. But <laughs> Wait, I wasn't paying attention. What, what did you say? <laughs> First, you get an idea. The light bulb pops over your head. Who do you talk to about that idea? Who are, do you have a person that you talk to? Do you kibitz over that idea before you put pen to paper or finger to keyboard? I don't. No. You don't? Really? Because sometimes if you go tell the idea to somebody, the impetus to make the thing goes away. Yes, for sure. But sometimes if I've just got half a germ of an idea that I just want to sound out because it won't form until I start talking, yeah, then I'll... Do you work, you're in a studio, right? You're at Periscope yeah, Studios? Yeah, I'm at Periscope so Studios. So you're surrounded by people. Right. And there's no instinct, there's no, um, not instinct, but you're not sort of tempted to say, hey, what do you think of this? Oh, well, yeah, I do do that. Okay. I'll, I'll sometimes, if I get stuck, and it's usually just I'm stuck on a scene. Right. right. I'll come out and I'll start babbling about it. And then a lot of times I'll solve it in the middle of my sure. little rant. But it, it, then somebody, you know, Steve Lieber or somebody will say, what about this? And, you know, we do the same thing back. You'll... He's trying to come up with Superior Foes cover, and, and then I, but who hasn't been stewing on it forever, can walk up with something fresh. Fresh eyes, sure. Yeah. Uh, then when, so in the initial idea phase, Jay, mm -hmm. you come up with these high concepts, you know, a superhero whose identity is compromised, and what happens from there? Do you, do you run that by someone? What do you think of this idea? These are some of the, the, con the, the beats I have for where stories can go. Yeah, I mean, it's usually just the, just the premise I'll usually run by a couple people and just, yeah. what do you think of this? There's this idea that I have, what do you think? Yeah. And then from there, then the actual writing is usually... Solitary. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And then do you, do you guys show drafts at all to anybody or...? I do, yeah. I know that, that like when, when I was first working on Norman, I would constantly show that to people. I know I showed you. Yeah. And, and would, would just say, you know, hey, you know, what, what, is this stupid? You know, right. Basically that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, I mean, I mean, everybody does that, right? No. Well, I, I like to think it's a finished script, but it's apparently <laughs> treated as a draft once I turn it in. And, <laughs> and then they come back with notes. And then well, I mean, I, certainly you know, if you have an notes. editor, you're showing it to them. I mean, they, yeah. they're going to go through it. But you don't show it to people before an editor? No, no. No. There's no time. You know that. <laughs> I, I, thank you, thank you work in a different environment than I do. <laughs> I, I work at home and I don't, I don't talk to anybody about anything until it's done, basically. 
Uh, uh, so, you, so you, <laughs> now do you talk to your artists about? Um, not really. Really? Um, I mean, you know, in sort of the initial creation stages, if there's something I need, I think, you know, that I need to talk to them about visually, then yeah. Sure. But for the most part, no. If I'm going to sort of interrogate anybody, I interrogate myself. I just, uh, your equivalent of talking it out, I, yeah. I just write it out. And that's right. how I find problems and, you know, sort of snags and things. I'll I'm, literally just start writing stuff down. All my thoughts kind of spill onto the page I'm, and I spot sorry. problems. <laughs> I've done that. I've like tricked myself into doing that. But, like I'm stuck on a story and so I'll write an email to a friend about it, to another writer, and describe to him what the story is so far to describe my problem, but nine times out of ten, While in doing, doing that, that yeah. I fix it anyway, and I never need to send the email. I, so it's it's kind of a trickier way of what yeah. you're talking about, well, just I, writing it. I just made a note from what Jeff was saying. Uh, talk to the duck is an old software <laughs> programming trick. Uh, I can't remember who actually called it that, who came up with it, but the idea was there was some, you know, Hot, it might even have been like John Carmack or something, some hotshot software developer who always told his programmers if they had a problem, they should, he had this like toy duck in the studio <laughs> and they should just, instead of talking to him about it, they should just go to the duck and tell the duck what their problem is. And in doing so, nine times out of ten, they figured out the solution Isn't this by what Alan Moore and the snake god thing? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Very different. Very okay, different. sure. Ducks, snakes, mortal, yeah, en mortal right. enemies since the dawn of time. <laughs> <laughs> you, when you brought up the talking to the artists, like, yeah. oh yeah, wait, in the brainstorming stage, I often, especially when I'm starting to work with an artist, I just ask them, can you tell me some stuff you would really like to draw yeah. so, I don't, right. so I don't typecast you into things I've already seen, which happens right. to artists a lot. Sure. And then I say, and please tell me things you really hate yep. drawing, and I will not go there. Uh, sure. Because I don't want to make them miserable. They got to spend so much more time on a page than I do. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, in terms of talking to artists too, like especially, I, I know for me, like the further Nate and I got into doing uh, the book, uh, we we text a lot, and and then also we'll be on like iChat and stuff. And and usually it's like he'll he'll send pages over, and there will be something in one of the pages that'll make me think of something else. And so we'll start texting about that. I was like, hey, why did you put this in here? This is like, like, like something, that, like, it, something that, that wasn't in, sure. in, in the script necessarily. And, and that will kind of spur me on to, to think of something else. And so then we'll start texting back and forth about it to the point that like the plot or the script actually becomes just like kind of like your, not a rough draft, but kind of like a, 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 a base map. document. A yeah, like a starting point. Yeah. What's that? Roadmap. A roadmap. Yeah. Yes. So, um, and uh, then it's like kind of the conversations we have after that are we kind of like expand on all of that. So, so I, be, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to say I've been really lucky in that I did that actually with both uh, Fuse and Umbral. I said to Chris and Justin, like, what do you want to draw? What do you want to do? And they both just came back and said, don't really care as long as it's good. I'm like, okay, no pressure then. You know. So before yeah. you, before the story goes to your artist, we'll, we'll get sort of procedural here. I, I kind of want to talk about how you are, how you're writing your stories. So basically, in, I guess in TV terms, it'd be breaking your stories. How are you, you, fig, you have your overall premise, you, you get a sense of beginning, middle, and end, I presume. Uh, how do you break it down, particularly when you're doing serialized comics that may or may not have a ending in place, or you may have it or not, but you have to start, you know, you string it along. Uh, are you approaching it as, you know, a three-act structure and then breaking that amidst, amidst issues? Are you treating it like a, a series, a TV series or something where there's, the cliffhanger is the thing that you're, you're following? Or basically, how are you, how are you uh, constructing your stories, again, before you even start typing or writing? Is there an answer to this question? Do you stare at the, do you just stare in space? Do you eat a pita? I, I tend to build in layers. Um, I'll, you know, rough out. I, I do all this stuff longhand before, you know, uh, getting to the <laughs> computer. And I tend to just write out something really rough and vague. And if that makes sense, then I'll start to fill in a few more details. And if it still makes sense, then you know, a few more details. And I just sort of build it in layers. So sort of like an, like an outline that just gets... It gets filled, filled out in. more and more. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So almost like if you're drawing, you start with a skeletal structure and start right, and, guess, and building yeah. from that. Um, and long term, it depends on what sort of series it is. Like the Fuse, I'm plotting very much like a TV series, mm -hmm. but Umbral is more like a sort of novel, almost really. All right, Eric. Yeah, I I I I start with just like having the the the, the overall premise and like where I want to get to, and then I start just kind of compiling notes. 
uh, and, and like uh, for, for Norman, I have like a number of books that are just like filled up with ideas and like this and then bits of dialogue and stuff like that. And then it becomes kind of like, what do I want to happen at each, at each point? So. Sure. Yeah. And uh, Jeff, you drew your own comic for a long time. Yeah. The Interman. So you are a cartoonist. Yeah. When you're breaking down a story, do you ever start thumbnailing? Or are you now Sometimes, once in a while. I try to, whenever I'm working on an issue, I just try to find any entry point that, that comes to me first. And sometimes it will be just like some images come to me. I'll doodle those, especially if I can't describe it in a way that it, if I, you know, I don't want Paul Pelletier or, or somebody or Jonathan Case to just be agonizing over what I'm trying to describe when I could just sketch it out. And then here, and then you take it to the next six levels. Um, <laughs> but uh, and sometimes just dialogue will come to you, and sometimes just plot will come to you, and whatever is coming to you, I say just jump in there and let it guessing roughly where it comes in the story, and then start filling in. Seems to be one way to get me going uh, right off the bat. And I, I use like a page template where it's like now most of the uh, monthly comics are about 20 pages, and I'll have like this thing, I'll just have page one uh, and going all the way through 20, and then I have an average of five panels a page. So it just says panel one, nothing, character one, character two. And then I start, I use that so that there's not void on the screen, you know, and it's like, it's already a little skeleton, even though nothing's really happened yet. And, uh, and everything, you have to make yourself feel momentum, and that just revs you up to do more and to start start putting it all down because sure. really it doesn't matter what you write at first you can go through you can just write have them say horrible filler dialogue I do that all the time just definitely go change it to good dialogue <laughs> you know just like they and, and I've caught myself sometimes and it's funny for the editors when they find something where it's something like Ben Grimm's making a joke and they're like oh yeah I forgot to put the joke in there <laughs> But you know, you, you know the feeling that you're going for. It's like I want a little levity in this scene, or I want things to start getting dour. And no. oh, I was, was going to yeah, go ahead, no. Eric. No, no, go, you go, yeah, ahead. go go go. Because no, I was no, going to ask you a question. Yeah, what so. you were saying too is it's like a lot of times, yeah, sometimes just an image will come into your head. Mm -hmm. that, that it's it's like even if you have an overall idea like what's going to be happening in that mm -hmm. issue, sometimes like you're like, okay, this pops in to my head, and so I need to find a place to put that. And sometimes that's what like winds up starting off the issue, or it's like a good image for like how to end the issue. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, it's good to not do the same thing every time. Right. Yeah. I think it's good yeah. for you. And, uh, and what you brought up, Eric, about uh, once you see the art, and then suddenly it spurs something you weren't anticipating. I do that all the time where characters, where suddenly somebody draws a character, and like, whoa, that character turned out way more interesting. <laughs> yep. Then yeah. the, the little vague uh, rough I had in my head, and then suddenly that character starts running around. It, they literally take a life of their own because they start doing more in the story because I want to see them now. And I feel it, it's kind of like a game theory sort of thing where you're defying uh, a plot order. So I think I, that's pretty exciting. Well, and in terms of uh, what you were saying about not having a blank page, I mean, I miss. I think it's probably safe to assume that the audience of a panel like this, most of you are interested in the process of writing or are writers yourselves. If there's one, and I say this to a lot of people, because frankly, we all, I'm pretty sure everybody on this panel would say we've all, we all forget this from time to time as well. It is so much easier to rewrite oh, yeah. something than to, write, to, than to write fresh onto a blank page. Filling that blank page is the hardest part, so you just fill it with any old crap. It does <laughs> yeah. not matter. The dialogue can be crap, the, you know, the panel descriptions are wrong. A lot of the time I don't even put panel descriptions in mm. when I'm just roughing out. I call yeah. that the zero draft, where it's just notes about images and bits of dialogue. And then you go through and rewrite it, and the rewriting is so much easier. Uh, and it's so easy to forget that sometimes. So well, every page, every page should build and advance your story. Something, even when it seems like nothing happened on that page, something happened on that page. And you've got to... And you, what you can do is you can just sit there, write down one to twenty, and you can say on page one, uh, you know, we're gonna we see the castle, and then we go to the dungeon, uh, and then page two, you know, and just go through page by page, do a page breakdown. Editors often will just make you do this anyway, so they're very helpful that way, and uh, and then you start. Once you get into it, it's you realize it's the same thing in miniature with each panel. Each panel's got to be. And if it's not advancing things, what's it there for? You know, it's not really doing anything. 
not, you know, if it's just there to be clever, that's probably not a good enough reason. Yeah, Jay, I, I read somewhere that the, the first draft is just you telling the story to yourself. And that is kind of freeing to like, no one's going to see this. Right, it can right. be as yeah, bad as it needs it. to yeah. be. It's just, <laughs> you know, a starting point. So you're not looking at that blank screen. Now, Jay, I've seen you post on Twitter photos mm -hmm. of a process where you have it's index cards and the different colors. Uh, What's happening there? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's more TV stuff. That, right, that's, but it was for a comic. I think you were using, you, uh, at least a, the tweet seemed. Was it? I You're think so. You're such a TV guy now. You don't even. I can't read. Really. I know, man. You are. That was probably, I'm trying to think if I, wrote, if I wrote any comic book in that method. So the TV stuff doesn't bleed over as much not in procedurally. That, not in that breaking, because it's all about acts one through six and what's going to fit in what act and TV and comics doesn't have that constraint. So, it's so when you guys are writing comics, do you think in terms of acts and do you think in terms of, you know, first act, second act, third act in, in, the, in the classic sense or does it change when you're dealing with this will be collected into a trade so each issue That's, plays I, a different game than it used to or, or what have you? I think, I mean, I know it's a dirty word to write for the trade, but I do. I mean, I, I try to think about what the... Well, no, and it, like, like and everybody kind of should. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the things that when I talk to other writers that we work with, um, I think a big part of the success of The Walking Dead and also Saga are that uh, both Brian and Robert write for the trade, and, it's, and it's, I think they do a very good job of not just writing for the trade, but they also, ev every part of that trade works on its own as a single issue, but then you get to the end of that trade and you're like, oh, I want to come back for... Yeah. A, the next issue, or B, the next trade. And Robert has been particularly good about not just writing for the trade, but then writing for the larger hardcover collection so that like everything has this like perfect breaking point so that they're bringing you back to the next thing. And yeah, it's, it's, it's I think, kind of a different structure than like the three-act yeah. thing. Yeah, sure. I, I've worked with three acts occasionally doing graphic novels, like, right. you know, like 180 page done right. in one yeah, yeah. books. Um, but even then, I've only, worked with the sort of traditional three act structure once or twice. Most of the time I treat them more like an actual novel way. You have like three or four <coughs> major turning points rather than just, you know, your central thing. Yeah. All right. Jeff, you've written you've written uh, you're writing continuing series but something like Mysterious, which had a, a finite ending. Yeah. Uh, are you mapping the whole thing out? As, as a, a large a tapestry and then breaking it into f four or five parts? It was five parts, right? Six. Uh, six. six. Yeah. Six. Uh, uh, and then do you break that along act structures or are you saying, you know, doing the, the thing where each issue has its own adventure and it all ties together? It's, it's a weird thing to think in terms of acts, even though you can later break it up into acts, you know, because um, ultimately if you said, oh, beginning, middle, and end, three acts. Um, <laughs> You know, but I, I, I think, and I, I'm sorry to, again, make it, to compare it to a different medium. That's fair. But TV probably, and now TV, now that TV's good, <laughs> uh, you know, compares a little better because you can turn, it's like, like you said, you're talking about six acts, and you, it's like you, you can make this anything you want to. If you want to break it up and have some crazy ten act thing, you can do that as long as, you know, you know what, you, what you're doing. My main thing is I, I figure out the ending early on because okay. yeah. I, I have to know what I'm going to and also I you know I like a really good ending I you know I've read so many things in my life where it's like this was such a great ride and then they didn't know how to end it and you see that all the time and uh, it's, to me it's, it's uh, a bad dessert ruining a meal <laughs> thank you <laughs> right? you're, you're good at that uh, <laughs> it, it, so to me it's very important to deliver on that ending and I'm like okay and a lot of times I will start the story I'll skip to the ending and write that, or write a rough of it to make sure, like, here's how long it's going to take, here's what I want to happen. And sure, yeah, I'll go back. I'll often find I'm, I'm going to veer off along the way to get there uh, and have to change the ending. But generally, I end up being pretty close to what I planned when I go back and look at my notes. Uh, I would advise everybody to do that. Uh, sometimes you do, later after you've written a ton of stuff, you do trust yourself to land the plane. you just like, you know what? I know how a story works. <laughs> I'm gonna, to, I gotta make this interesting and surprising for myself so it's interesting and surprising for the readers. So I am gonna throw myself some curves and force myself to get out of it and then we'll see if I can actually end it. I've never stuck myself. So, you know, I guess somewhere my subconscious is helping me out and 
trying to do me a solid. Well, no, and it goes back to what you were saying too about the, 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 the roadmap analogy. Yeah. It's, it's like having a map is useless if you don't know where you're going. Yeah. So it's like it does help to, to kind of like, okay, I know I'm going to get here, and it doesn't matter which route you take to get there. Right. Yeah. You, ever, you ever seen a story where someone just suddenly shifts genres, and it's not in that cool Cohen Brothers way, <laughs> where they like, whoa, that, you know, uh, No Country for Old Men was something different yeah. by the end than I thought it was at the beginning. No, some people get into it and they don't really know what their story is. Right. And then it's suddenly like, what? Everybody's using magic? What? You know? <laughs> and, and, and the obvious detective that I think almost everybody uh, thing is true detective, because everybody watched it. Uh, and so many people wanted that to be a lost, like, uh, supernatural yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. It was like, but they weren't doing that at the beginning. There's yeah. nothing establishing that it's going to be like that. And it would have been really weird had it suddenly become that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that doesn't mean you can't throw some surprises at people, but know what kind of story you're telling. You know, and know the tone is very important. We should get into that at some point. So to, to the structure of knowing your ending, a lot of you guys have written things that don't re I mean, you know, the creator and stuff, you, can, you know where your ending is going to go. But even with Noble Causes or Dynamo 5 or, you know, you're writing Aquaman, there's no, there, there's no ending. It never ends. It never ends, yeah. right? I mean, and Eric, jumps you jumps back in the water and Aquaman, swims off. That's what happens. Aquaman ends every two years. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, you know, <laughs> or Eric, you were writing yeah, Extreme real, Studios yeah, books. Yeah. I mean, there was no ending to these stories. You, you sort of had to create mini endings within... But still, never end anything. Hmm. Well, no, but I mean, I think with stuff like that, I mean, it's like if you go back and look at like what Lee and Kirby were doing on Fantastic Four back way back when. Sure. Uh, they it's like that never ended, but they would tell like little stories within the yeah, framework. Like the, the, I mean, it's it's like everybody's life. It's like like your life doesn't end until you die. That's it's true. Like there's little things that happen in your life that are like little stories. Yeah. They would end a story in the middle of a book. Oh, yeah. I was always fascinated by that. It's like, <laughs> well, like the story just ended, and we're on page 12. No, well, but, like everyone talks about the first time Galactus showed up, and it's like the first half of that issue is the resolution of a story with the Inhumans, yeah. and then you start the Galactus story, and then it's like the third issue of that, I think, it ends in the middle, and then they start off on something else. And it's like they used to do that all the time. Yeah. I like it. No, I, I mean, and that's, and that's more like how life is. Is it's like everything's like going back to like the three act thing and stuff like that. It's like yeah. not everything's neatly structured that way. Yeah, Things it breaks kind of you out like of thinking. Happen. I am reading a story. Right. right. You're just like I'm being pulled along, and that's kind of a good thing to pull off if you can. Mm -hmm. That's fair. So now you mentioned tone. Yeah. And finding the tone for your story. Tone is super important to what you're doing, uh, and it's a hard. I. Well, maybe it's just hard for me to explain, and maybe Jay will save me. Um, <laughs> But uh, tone is everything, and it's like the, the, my, one of my favorite examples in recent years, I worked on the Thunderbolts, uh, and I worked with uh, Kev Walker and Declan Shalvey. And when Kev and I were thrown together, we had never worked together before, and I didn't know what it was going to be like. And I had some ideas of where I wanted to take it. But as soon as he started drawing, and I realized he was doing this kind of uh, Jamie Hewlett meets Mike Mignola uh, kind of style that like it was over the top yet you could still go heavy and have some gravity with it and I was like and it established the tone so thoroughly it let me do stuff I could do extreme humor and then I could do just something scary and and, and it's all because his style allowed me to do that um, and the so the tone of the stories tended to follow that it's like it wasn't going to read like another book I was working on it was going to like you know, these characters are going to take things a bit too far. Someone's going to do something horribly mean. That's the kind of thing you can pull off now with this, even though they're all wearing these outrageous outfits and flying around shooting lasers out of their eyes. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of that does actually come down to choice of artist as right. well. Right, yeah, you know. definitely. Uh, yeah, and whether that's a choice you make or a choice you have thrust upon you, I think it does. You know, can you imagine... I don't know, say next wave drawn by Ron Lim. It just, you know, it wouldn't, <laughs> it would not be. Why are we like naming names? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> it's, well, you, yeah. you definitely can't I'm force it, it would to be, be a something very, very that different you can't book, achieve. You know? I've, seen, I've seen very failed books do that where people try to make their, the writers plunging ahead with like what they want the book to be, but that's not the right artist yeah. for it. Yeah, exactly. And they keep, just, you go into battle with the army you have, not, yeah. not yeah, your wish Yeah, this is not a value army. judgment. I'm just saying, you yeah. know, yeah. you've, you've got to bear that in mind. Well, yeah. And I mean, sometimes the fun in playing with the tone is finding an artist who 
it, you kind of play him against type a little bit. Right. That helps create a new tone in and of itself. Yeah. Right? yeah. Part of the fun with seeing Ryan Otley on Invincible get super gory is that he's like a you superhero just artist. Expect and it, yeah. it just, it, 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 you don't right. expect that. And uh, that's a whole different kind of fun. So I want to talk about writing for artists. I mean, comics aren't comics without drawings. Uh, and word balloons and all those other things, uh, but your direct, you know, you and your artist are working together, and in theory, in theory, <laughs> yes. So the the initial question is, uh, what are you putting in your scripts or your plots, depending on your on how you're going? How much are you telling your your artists that are on the page? How much of it is in conversation that you're you're you know talking over the phone? <laughs> Basically, you know, when you're when you're writing a script, and I guess it changes depending on who your artist is, what your relationship is. Uh, but on, on you know, in the spectrum, uh, what is the most you've had to to put down on paper, and, and what is the least you've had to put down on paper to get whatever's in your mind's eye on the page? Or are you is part of the thrill putting words out there and seeing what that artist does? And again, I know it varies artist to artist. So this is, is this a fairly broad question that maybe you'll Various get us all. panel to panel. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, again, I think it comes down to who your artist is and knowing them. I mean, you know, doing Wasteland, I've been doing Wasteland for so long now. We, Chris and I did like the first 28 issues together. By the time we got to like issue 15, 16, I knew I could just say on Michael Grimm. And sure. I knew what I'd get back, you know, that's all I had to say. And he knew what I was expecting from that. Yeah, you've um, got to kind of build a rapport over sure. the course of the relationship. Yeah. And like how are you building that rapport, I guess might be the question. How do you build a rapport with your artist so that... Well, you start, that you start off, head. at least my experience is, you start off writing a lot. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and then, you know, yeah. as, as Anthony says, you, yeah. you gradually work down to where you're giving them, like, shorthand on stuff. Yeah. yeah. So and it, uh, sometimes I'll ask the artist what, like... I'm writing a book now that I'm writing, you know, Marvel style, just plot first, just to see how that is, because this guy is such a good storyteller. It's, you should try it. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting experience. <laughs> right, every, so who, who has written something Marvel style? Yeah, no. So Anthony, you're the only one who has it, huh? <laughs> Do it. I, got, I've got, I have got the biggest stick in the world up my ass. I'm just, I'm really not sure. I'm really not sure I could let go of that, you know? Well, for, well, I, for, I, do, I do kind of a hybrid sometimes. Like, uh, should we explain uh, what that is? Just yes, in case? we should. We yeah. should does, yeah. does everyone know what that means? Okay, for, then skip for anybody it. Wait, that does it. Some people don't know. Yeah, Marvel style is where you write uh, a basic plot description of what happens in the issue, and the artist breaks down the panels and chooses the shots, and then the writer comes back over that art and scripts it, puts in the word balloons, the narrative boxes, thought balloons if you're going to use them. Uh, and and a, it's kind of based on the lore that like Stanley used to just kind of like tell people like, hey, these three things are happening in this comic book, go home and draw it. And then yeah. because Jack Kirby was amazing, he would take those you know, three notes and turn that into you know, Galactus. Yeah, it, it puts the onus on the comic book artist to tell the story. Yeah. And then the writer then has to you know, work within that framework, place dialogue, things like that. And then it's, a, it's a bit of a misconception though because Jack could write. Yes. And he was writing, yeah. and if you look at those pages, he was writing his own dialogue. Yeah. Stan didn't stick to it, yeah. but you know, he, he's getting across the points that he needs to get across with whatever dialogue he was filling in, and then Stan will go mess with the dialogue sure. or something, I mean, but he, it's, it's not... See, I, I ran into like, this like, like Kirby, or Stan would give Jack like a springboard. They talk about it on yeah. the phone, yeah. from what I understand. Yeah. And, and, and then Jack would actually do the writing. And Jack yes, was, Jack, Jack would was, write it. Jack yeah. was effectively doing what we were just saying about writing the sort of rough. Yes. You know, yeah. This is this he is what we need a character rough. to say. Sure. Right. Yeah. And Stan well, no, and it's, it's funny too because like Keith Giffen used to work that way too. Like on Justice, I mean, he may still do this, but he, but he he would actually like draw like layouts for an entire thing with dialogue oh, suggestions right. in there, huh. and then someone like like Mark Dematis would come in and and do the more polished version. Of right. That. Yeah. So. Well, and Mar Marvel method, as we call it, is completely dependent on the skill of the artist yeah. as a storyteller. Uh, I, was I only slip into it maybe in a pure action scene. That's what I, that, that's the Because then it's like, okay, people aren't even going to be saying very much here. You know, and yeah. then it's just like, so here's like what needs to happen on this page. Right. Yeah. And then let them go. And then if let they want more direction, I give it. Yeah, right. Is, 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 isn't, there, isn't there like a Mark Miller uh, script out Nemesis. there? Where, yeah, isn't it where it's like, make it look awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was like, it's, isn't that all of them? I think, I think it, Robert's done it, that too it, a few times in Walking Dead. It was the scene where Nemesis escapes from the prison. 
And yeah, he wrote just something like, it is the most awesome fight scene you've ever seen in your life. Two pages. That's, that's better. <laughs> Back I was, to sleep. Yeah. I was an assistant at Marvel, and there was a John Byrne script for a Hulk issue that just said pages three through five, fight. Right. Yeah. Like, not even like an adjective on how they good, fight. Yeah, yeah, not even how good the fight should be, just fight. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah that's, it that's, be I, I'll bones. be honest with you. I think that's, that's like lazy. Oh, that, yeah. that's very lazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No question about it. Paul Smith did that to me when I was doing X Men first class, and uh, he said, Jeff, I have to work Marvel style. That's the way the Galactus trilogy was done. We all brought it up. <laughs> he gave me this feel, and I'm like, okay. And then it was really hard because I was like, wait, how am I. I don't know what they're going to say, you know, like, because he's filling it in. And then he would, like, just randomly open somebody's mouth. And I'm like, yeah. no, that's the worst. I mean, I know, this, and I was yeah. like, Paul, what are they saying? I don't know. Like, that's not what Kirby did. <laughs> but he, God, I was, I was just in gymnastics trying to figure out, like, I wouldn't have her talk here. What, what's Marvel Girl saying? And, uh, you know, it turned out great, obviously. But still, it's like, this isn't really Marvel style. This is not what they were doing. It's Paul Smith style. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Paul, it's what Paul. <laughs> so now, Anthony, you well, see, you've, you've never was. done Marvel style. You are writing full scripts at all times. Do you find that what, land, what ends up on the page is what you wanted it to be, or mm, pretty much? Pretty okay. much, yeah. yeah. yeah that's that's uh, great. And if it isn't, I ask for corrections. Um, yeah, uh, but I, I don't know. I mean, the guys I work with, I generally mm. have been working with a while. And, you know, they, they know what I'm like and I know what they're like. They've been and beaten into submission. You're right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, uh, I don't have, you know, heavy notes because they kind of know what I'm expecting to see and I know what they like to draw. Uh, so, you know, it's, again, building on that relationship. And so there's a stuff. common... Uh, but to yeah. me, finding, finding the beats and the pacing and sort of the moments in the gutters, you know, between the panels and the... the scene cuts and things like that that is part of the writing to me that's like that's my job um, and it's not that I don't think the artist couldn't do it I absolutely know those guys could do it but I just feel like I haven't done my job if I don't at least give them an idea of what I expect to see there now if they come up with something better I always tell my artists if you have a better idea if you can frame this scene better if you have a better idea for a panel composition anything like that please go for it you know um, and that does happen, and I'm like, yeah, good call, I like it. Um, but I will always at least put something down so that they can b work off it and bounce off it. Yeah, that, that's something, it's, it's like everyone always talks about like how dense Alan Moore's scripts are, yeah. and it's like one of the things that I thought was cool, and like when he first started doing Supreme for us back in the 90s was, you know, I would get these scripts and read them, and he's actually really generous in terms of, of, of what he's providing the artist with because a lot of the times it's like you'll get like this you know three pages for one panel but he's giving you like lots of different you know options for what you can or can't put in there and right. it's, it's, it's not like any of it's just like a you know kind of dictatorial you know you have to draw this yeah. it's it's you know this is these are the choices sure sure yeah exactly nice. all right uh, and then there's, there's a common refrain when, when people are trying to become writers in comics, and the refrain is, find an artist and start making comics. Uh, you've all done create-your-own projects. How are you finding your artists? And how do you test these artists? Do you test them? Do you give them sample scripts? Do you, how much of your writing work is involved in selecting the artist, or are you just looking at work and saying, let's give this a, let's give this a run? You've really got to find books they've already worked on. And and that right away weeds out a lot of people because, like, good, this person finished something. Yeah. They are still self-starter. They, <laughs> they're, they're probably going to finish my script if, uh, you know, and like, you know, and then you can start to work with them. And, and sometimes you'll see somebody and you can tell that person's going to be really good. They're not quite there yet. I'm going to let them work with Anthony for a couple <laughs> of years, <laughs> and then I'm going to swoop in. And uh, sorry. yeah, I've taken chances on new guys, but. When I'm, when I'm looking at their samples on DeviantArt or their websites or whatever, I'm, I'm looking for quality but also quantity. You know, if you see a guy who has great pages and he's got five pages, then you're like, well, I, like, I want a body of work. Yeah. Somebody who's drawing new stuff every day and, and it shows me that he's hungry and committed and all that kind of stuff. So e even if they don't have a finished book, like Jeff said, if they haven't been published before, I at least want some indication that they want it, that they're going to work. And you, you know? keep things short if you don't know. Yeah. yeah. Don't yes. give them a whole lot of story. <laughs> right. You know, it's right. like, let's just do a 10-pager. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not going to be sign me up for this 25-issue maxi-series. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, and, and even guys who have done stuff before, if you're doing something out of their, uh, you know, comfort zone, for yeah. want of a better word, I'll often pick a few pages from the project and say, like, you know, do you want to do these just to see? We've done that with some of my graphic novels at Oni, where we just pick an action scene, a dialogue scene, you know, from random places in the book and say, draw these, just to get a feel for, can that, you know, yeah, we know this person can draw, I don't know, you know, raccoons with machine guns, right. but yes. can they draw two people sat in an office having a really tense conversation, you know? Because uh, a lot of artists can't switch that easily between those two extremes. So sometimes you have to do that as well. Yeah. So this is a more, this is writing, a writing question, but an odd one. Where are you writing? Do you sit at a desk? Are you on a computer? You mentioned you start longhand. Uh, uh, yes, but I do it at my desk. Jeff, you're in a studio. There's other people around. Uh, well, I start off, though, in a cafe, like a huge cliche at the, in the morning, because <laughs> I need coffee. And I, I, I go down the street to my little local cafe, and I work for a little bit, because it, it helps me to, like, I, I write until I get stuck. And I get on my bike, and I ride downtown to Periscope, and usually by the time I get there, it's like, ah, oh, good, your, page, your new pages have arrived. You know, and I get back on the, I get back on the computer, it's like, I've got more. I, I loaded up while I was, literally gears were turning. Um, and I've done that before where I've just kept moving around town all day just to keep <laughs> stuff going and it's, you know, whatever works for you. But I do find, you know, it's getting into that whole thing where, you know, white noise sometimes will help. You can go mow the yard and stuff will come to you to because meditate, get your subconscious meditated. kicks it yeah, out. Yeah. It's been working on. I don't think it helps me. Also, I, I tend to write a lot of different things. So if I'm stuck on something, I just move on to whatever book something is coming for. Mm -hmm. It's never in deadline order, unfortunately. But, <laughs> but it's better than just sitting there feeling like a loser because I'm not doing anything and nothing's coming. You know, it's just yeah. like I want to just be always producing something. That's, that's what I walk my dogs for. I get up in the morning, yeah. I, walk, I walk my dogs. That's kind of... Dogs keep the comics industry yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> going. Um, and yeah, and I, I just work in a you know, spare bedroom that's been converted to a study in my house uh, at a desk, whether I'm doing longhand or on the computer. And then I'll walk the dogs again or go to the gym or you know, things like that. Eric, um, where, are, where are you? Uh, well, at home I have an office, right. and, and, and that's, that's, where, that's where everything kind of comes together at. But like, like, generally speaking, I, I, I walk to and from work, and, and that's a mile each way so uh, I do a lot of writing while I'm walking which sure. I, I mean literally like like if, if something comes to me while I'm walking I will stop pull out the phone and start typing it all up mm. um, and the great thing is that the way everything syncs together now you know that 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 thing goes into a notepad on my computer I put that into the document um, but there's that and then there's a lot of I mean, I mean it's not actual writing but uh, the, the shower is really great because, the shower, the shower yeah. Yeah. because I, I stand in the shower and, and you know, think. Yeah. You know? And uh, it's like I, I, I've literally, like, if I've been stuck on something, I've taken a shower in the middle of the day to just kind of get I have my, my head going. Aaron, I've day. heard stories about Aaron Sorkin taking like three or four showers in a yep. day huh. and like putting on fresh clothes because that. I, I, like, I don't think I've ever mind. done three or four <laughs> showers. So that, that's that's what he's doing that I'm not. So I've got to I've got to remember that. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, and then the other thing is, uh, is yeah, just stuff comes to you in like different orders. It's mm -hmm. like, and, 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 and if, 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 it's, if it's not there, then, then I just stop and, and, and do something else. Yeah, when it's not there, when you hit that point, Jay, well, first, Jay, yeah, where, no, where I mean, are you I'm, writing? I'm, I'm like Anthony, I think. I'm, I'm at my desk. Uh, that's where I do all my writing. I, I don't go to a cafe, I, I, but, uh, but I do figure out story problems. I run every morning, and that's a lot of times I'll figure out a scene or something that's not working, but I'm at my desk on my computer. I almost never write longhand just because I can type so much faster than I can write. Uh, oh, sure. That's why I write longhand. Oh, because you can slow exactly you down? I'm, yeah, I'm a really fast typist. And oh, I, you, I deliberately write oh, longhand to slow myself down. Yeah, that is I, interesting. I, uh, I just keep an open kind of... Uh, like one document that I just call the story bible that I just type everything into like notes and ideas and all that Man, stuff. that's a good idea because I put everything into different documents. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a giant ever moving document. So you, you guys have done work outside of comics and I want to talk about how that affects or doesn't affect or how it's, how it's different. So for example, Jay, you work in TV which is a writer's room. There's a group of people that collaborate on these stories and then you splinter off and write mm -hmm. scripts. Uh, Anthony, you, you write for video games and novels. Um, Jeff, you've 
draw on your own stories, which is, it's still comics, but it's still that, it's a mm -hmm. different experience. And Eric, I mean, you're, you're a publisher, so you're constantly getting stuff shown to you, and you're reading pitches, and you're reading other comics. And in your younger days, you wrote songs. Mm -hmm. uh, so how, how is your approach to writing other things bleeding into your writing comics, or vice versa? Uh, how do those things influence or affect the other, if they do at all? Or are you so good at compartmentalizing your brains that it, comics time is comics time and everything else is, uh, you know, you're in the shower? All day long in the shower. All day long in the shower. I, I think for writers me... Writers are some of the cleanest. Yeah. <laughs> super, <laughs> super, and, super and, clean. And, well, some With of lots are. of exercise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think for me, I've been, I've been running creator own comics for so long, you know, with where there is, especially an image, no editorial interference or anything that when I moved into television, having a writer's room has helped to sort of, uh, has prompted me to just kind of up my game a little bit and not just write the first draft of something and have somebody draw it and turn it in and call it good. I mean, I can, uh, even when I'm working on comic book scripts now, I can sort of see and hear the voices of the other writers on the shows I'm working on kind of grilling me like, hey, you can do better than that, that idea, you know, that. It, it's, that's kind of gotten into my head. It hasn't changed the way I write, but it's made me push myself more, I think. Right. Anyone else want to field uh, this one? Well, get, I, I actually, I've like given lectures on how similar game and comics plotting are. The structure of stories mm -hmm. in a long form comic and a video game, very, very similar. Um, but in terms of sort of, I don't know, bleeding into one another, they kind of do a little. I think the main thing is that games, like, a bit like TV, mm -hmm. it's not a writer's room, but there are lots of people yeah. who are stakeholders uh, <laughs> in the narrative of a video game. You know, the, the writer is never, ever the most important person on a game. Yeah. Um, you know, that's always design and visual production. Mm -hmm. um, so it does, you do get a certain amount of, you, you can hear, yeah, as you say, yeah. people going, well, hang on a second, what about this? Yeah. Um, but it also brings home to you how freeing comics is. Well, yeah, that's the flip side of it. Right. Is that what makes me love comics so yeah. much is that I can do what yeah. I want. Yeah. Well, and not just that, but there's also no budget. Well, uh, yeah, that I, too. You yeah. know, yes. I, nobody's going to turn around to me and say, well, actually, our 3D modeler, you know, is too busy and we can't build this extra character or we can't have a three extra tanks or, you yeah. know, whatever. That fight scene. Uh, we can't blow that, but we can't blow that building up. Here's one. We can't blow that building up because then the player won't be able to go there. And if we do that, that means the player can't go there before we blow it up either. <laughs> like all these weird technical limitations. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. Like strange technical limitations about pathfinding and stuff in games. Don't have any of that, any of that. So you can just do, you know, go crazy. Um, so yeah, I guess if anything, it makes me more enthusiastic about yeah. doing comics, uh, you know, coming back to it from outside. Because of that singular freedom. Control and, and freedom, sure. Yeah. Uh, you guys got anything? Nothing? I got nothing. You got nothing? <laughs> All right. Um, there's 10 minutes left. Uh, do you want to see if anybody in the crowd has yeah. Uh, yeah, questions? Sure. Does anybody have a question? There's a, there's a mic back there uh, so we can pick you up on the feed yeah. and we'll see how many we can burn through and then we'll plug stuff sure. and we'll get out of here. Is there a, what, is there a Your name leaking? Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Your name. I am Sharnold <clears throat> uh, and I was hoping you could talk a little bit more about physically how you organize all of your thoughts. Jay, you mentioned you have one document. Eric, you said you have a lot of different documents. An idea comes to you, you write something down on a napkins at Denny's. How, you know, how do you physically organize all that so that well, you can come back to it? Why do we have to be at Denny's? Why yeah, you yeah. <laughs> no, no, none of us go to Denny's anymore. Um, <laughs> and and, yeah, and I personally... Over my hammy. He loves it's a classy yeah. place. No, and write. also it's like I, I, my days of writing stuff on napkins are are pretty long behind me with the iPhone. It's like I, I, everything goes into the notes on there. And that's the reason why it's like I'll start different notes about different things and so I wind up with like a dozen different notes about things that are going into the same issue. Um, so yeah, it's that and then the computer and then also I have notebooks, but the notebooks are things that I write in kind of more when I'm home in bed and just like, like, like I, I, I write down dreams, I write down you know, just stray thoughts or pieces of dialogue and stuff. Some guys use this dictational software now. I can't remember what it's called. I just think that's creepy. Uh, yeah, I don't. It, it, well, it is creepy, and it reads creepy, because uh, I remember sometimes I would get a lot of stuff sent my way at, at Marvel to, so I could line up what's going on in other books. 
And it, it's a weird formatting thing. It, it reads like some kind of Proustian uh, kind of just r ramble through consciousness. And I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what I'm looking at. And uh, yeah, I can't. It's, it's kind of like that spam it. use that was going around like yeah. a few years back where it'd just be these big blocks of text right, that yeah, sometimes yeah. accidentally meant accidentally, something. Yeah. Like that. Well, and if you want, <clears throat> I'm going to give you a plug now because Anthony's website, you have written extensively about your process. Thousands and, and, and How he organizes his thoughts and just his structure and everything. And so you should, is it, it's just anthonyjohnson.com. Yeah, it's just my name, anthonyjohnson.com. Yeah. And he's, they're really informative, like, Detailed stuff about the way he he works. So I would that's more detail you're going to get here. Yeah. I, I'm a walking cliche. I just I have a moleskin. I make all my notes on there, and then I literally type up exactly what I've written in the notebook. And as I'm typing it up, that gives me new thoughts. And but and I do it in this piece of software called Scrivener, where you can make notes as well as actually writing the script. And but you have like w different windows open. And I've I've got a whole yeah, method. He's, he's, <laughs> it's yeah. it's pretty in depth, so I'd, I'd check it out. I just, I'm a Word document with that, you know, the one series Bible in it, and then I'll kind of cut and paste that into the script issue and then just write. It's, I'm really bare bones. That drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I thought about a dot, like, I like, should try his style, but I'm like, I don't have hours to learn that. It, no, it, it no, seems so, so I understand, I understand. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Did, did we answer the question? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Hello, my name is Louis. I just was curious about when you're writing something or writing a certain style, do you try and avoid other stories? Or are you concerned about, oh, I'm going to write a crime drama. And then someone's like, hey, you should check out Breaking Bad. And you're like, no, no, don't want to watch this. <laughs> Didn't I see you tweet just the other day about how you've got a space cops story? Oh, yes, 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 I did, I did. I did. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, bemoaning the fact that I have a book that's going to come out from Image. Uh, I think uh, yeah, I think August we're talking is about this doing an exclusive? it. Exclusive? Uh, I'm not for, I'm not okay. saying what it's called yet or who's okay. drawing it, but uh, but yes, and it's it's a Western police thing, uh, in uh, alien planet, but Western themes. And Anthony has a book that's police on a space station, and then there's Red City. Is that what it is? It's mm -hmm. like yeah. a Raymond Chandler on Mars, and I'm just like, and then Ki this is And did you, do you also know Kieran has got one uh, called The Heat, which is Cops no, on Mercury. I yeah. didn't, you gotta be kidding I think, me. Wow. I think that should be a panel, like the four of you just yeah. fighting yeah. on stage over who gets to write this story. Yeah. Yeah. I can be the only one. <clears throat> but the reality of that is, and you know, I, I was sort of tweeting it jokingly, is that even if we had intentionally sat down to write the same thing, it's never gonna be the same thing. It's gonna yeah. be so different yeah. just because of we're all different, and our artists are all different, and our, it, it's, it's, so I, I don't, I never consciously try to avoid something like that. Uh, ideas are cheap, basically. Yeah. Ideas yeah, are cheap, exactly. execution exactly. is, you know. And, and, and also it kind of depends on what you're doing. It's like if you already have all your ideas and maybe you're just kind of like looking to see how something may have worked, like a, a similar idea, mm -hmm. and just like, oh, how did they handle this? Because I don't want to, you know, I mean, sometimes you're looking at somebody else's thing saying, I don't want to make the mistakes they made. Um, but then also there's things, I, I mean, kind of specific to what I do, uh, because I've got like magazine articles and interviews and stuff like that that, that are part of the, the story. For that stuff, I absolutely go out there and read as much other well, yeah, things you're like to capture that. Specific yeah, because, yeah, like, like, like if I'm doing something that's set up to look like, like a Rolling Stone interview or a Playboy interview or whatever like that, then I'm going to look at those things and say, okay, I want to format this and have it you know, kind of read the same research. thing. Yeah. That's a whole I, other panel. I will <laughs> say that I, it is interesting. That no one ever says like, "But there's already a superhero book at DC." Yeah, like, yeah. That, that never, that's never an issue. Like that, there, there's a. You're right. <clears throat> there's already a Batman book. Yeah. <laughs> so we have we have four minutes. But I thank ju you. Just want to yeah. quickly add a uh, sort of a, a story. Pat Mills, the guy who created 2000 AD and like wrote all of the early issues uh, at a signing years ago, uh, told us that he had spent years not reading other people's comics, not reading any other comics, because he didn't want to be influenced by them. He didn't want anybody to accuse him of, you know, ripping somebody else off. And then uh, somebody at a signing said to him, have you read Halo Jones? What do you think of Halo Jones? And he was like, oh, what's Halo Jones? I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah. And this is one of the greatest, you know, works in British comics. Wow. Uh, and that was the point where he was like, okay, maybe I'm missing out. Maybe I'm just being a bit paranoid, <laughs> you know? Right, so we literally have three minutes left. Um, 
the tall gentleman is waiting. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, who has a question? Can we answer in three minutes? <laughs> uh, this should be a short one. So I've I've seen this on doesn't matter. Um, comic uh, comics formatting vary widely. When I've downloaded like sample scripts from different people, I have nothing to lose. Never published a comic, but and I'm comfortable with screenplay. And now I have a comic idea. This may be a very rookie question, but. I just want to write and get it out there. I don't really care what it looks like, but some people may care what it looks like. Is there a format I should be using? No. Should, okay. Whatever works for you. Yeah, no, that's, nobody will care. And, and, and if you're used to screenwriting, it's pretty similar to comics anyway. Yeah. 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 There's, even, there's even like a final draft comic book template, I think. Or, yeah, or, but it's based on the Dark Horse template. It's not very good. Either. Oh, really? And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you may find that when you work with an artist, you'll find the best format to work with that yeah, person. Yeah, it'll, it'll evolve as you work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Plug stuff, guys. What do you want to talk? What do you want to tell people to uh, read or buy of yours? Let's start uh, with Jeff. I'll buy everything I do, but um, <laughs> uh, coming up, I have uh, finally another <coughs> original creation. I'm working with uh, artist Sandy Gerald, who worked on mm -hmm. some of your wasteland, and um, and uh, it's a book coming out from Oni later this year called Meteor Men, and it's more of a YA book. Uh, dealing with how one one uh, teenager deals with the invasion of the world, and uh, anyway, I, I, I'm very proud of this. And so, if you can look for it online as we start showing previews, I appreciate it. Uh, if uh, my site again is AnthonyJohnston.com, information on all of my books and games and stuff is there. If you like post-apocalypse epics, read Wasteland. If you like dark fantasy, read Umbral. If you like sci-fi cops, read The Fuse and not Jay's new book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Jay. No, I mean, you, you really should read The Fuse because it's, it's, it's very good stuff. It's one of my favorite things that, that Anthony's done so far. And well, thank you. Oh, and I'm, at, uh, I'm in Artist Alley, actually, at Table F7, and I have about 50 copies of The Fuse left that I do not want to take home because I live in England. So come by, come by and please and pick them up. And and so are you, are you of offering to give those away? Is that what that is? Well, I don't know about, <laughs> about give away, but you know. Wait, I should have done what Andy did about promoting a website at parkerspace.com. I have a section called scripts where I've been putting up some of my already used printed scripts. So you can compare to the comics and maybe a lot of people have said that helps. So. It doesn't cost anything if you want to just go check it out. I weeded out the embarrassing ones where I put personal notes in and stuff. <laughs> so, and then you can go track down the comic and see how it was executed. And I, I find that reverse engineering helps a lot. Eric, Jay, we have, uh, we're, being, we're being ushered to close this thing up. So plug something, quick. Buy, buy Image Comics. <laughs> uh, Jay? Uh, I've got Antihero, uh, uh, a monthly series on comiXology that's digital. Uh, 99 cents every issue. And uh, I draw SpongeBob comics. I write SpongeBob comics. I didn't say it at the beginning. And uh, I uh, host a podcast called Stuff Said. It's available at stuffsaidshow.com. Uh, Jay and Eric have both been on there. And it's long form conversations. If you like the way uh, we talk about stuff, yeah, it's uh, a please, great podcast. It's, uh, check it out. Yeah. And thank you all. Thank the, the panel. Uh, thank you. Have a good one. <laughs> you can't stop yourself. You just start. <laughs> I was a little worried that I was, I was almost going too heavy as an artist as the guy who draws, but I, so I, I checked like pull back a little bit. Like, oh, talk about right now. It would be weird to not, to not write. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Like a wall, just like a whole. <laughs> Scale In case you forget who you are. <laughs> yeah, one day. <laughs>
so I, I can see Called me Justin Price. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all good. I may have. Uh, that might be my fault. Autocorrect. Probably. Right now, my phone keeps autocorrecting cosplay to Coldplay. <laughs> yeah. You'd think at this point our phones would have learned what yeah. cosplay is. Well, well, I did get a new phone, so it hasn't relearned my notes. I'm oh, glad I'm next you're to you, waiting then. for me. You're just gonna. Well, I'll put down here. Can I have? <laughs> Now it is. Yes. <laughs> I used corrections on it. <laughs> My name is Justin Price. I'm the long lost son of Vincent Price. I like gloomy shit and smiling at people, weirdly enough. Hello. The lights are Oh, very sexy. I feel like I'm being Oh, wow, that's bright. Yes. I don't think I even need this mic. I don't think you do. <laughs> Looks like that now. Let me know when you're done with the Sharpie. Does this look bad? No, but they can still see your real name. <laughs> so someone will stalk you if they want to. No, let me, let me just fold it. You can fold it over. Like, it's right. Okay, um, they're also going to be, the, whatever's on here is going to be what's going up on our live feed. So yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll we'll just fix it. Oh, just change it to Justin. Okay. If you can change my name to Justin Prince. I just want it to be Justin. You did that ready? And for her, just Riri. R I R I. You can just strip it inside out and then write your name on it. It's not being used. Oh, no, it's being used. Oh, oh, no. this was going to be him. People actually want to see us? Oh, wow. Hi, people. Why is everybody in the back? Can we, 